Hello and welcome, my name is Jason Welsh, and um, I want to kind of just add a little bit more to this procedural material texture type workflow uh, that I had in Maya. So what I want to do here is kind of show you um, a little easier way to kind of see your results ahead of time. And you could set up all these really cool nodes, uh, like this one is kind of um, a cork type deal, and this one, yeah, I have no idea. And this one's kind of like a marble type surface. So what I have here is the ability to see what I'm doing real time. Okay, and that's all handled by high quality texturing. So what I would do is set up a scenario. I would say this is a good scenario, this plate. And here's a good way to make that. Definitely click Alt, click, and then click on the grid. Or you can do the check mark take it unchecked out of this, so no check mark here, will yield a perfect square plane. Okay, And why that is important is because in here, under UV Texture Editor, you'll notice that this plane takes up the UV space perfectly. Right? Good. Alright, so now that we know that, and why that is important, or not, if we can go to Hypershade, Let's may have some fun. Let's drag over, oh, let's say, a Lambert. And let's grab a 3D texture. Let's, let's grab clouds this time. Okay, clouds is going to get inputted into bump map. And this texture is going to get applied to this square, where I will thoroughly tweak it out until I get something cool. Okay, and now if I go into clouds, I can adjust the color ratio of the clouds and I can see real time what that looks like on the surface of the texture or material. Okay, if I up the contrast and you can see slight changes within the texture. great for making surface dirt. I couldn't even tell you how many times I came across that. Look how nice that looks. Especially for terrain. Okay, so how do I get this to maybe an alpha? Well, um, what you would do here is take it, and since it's already black and white values, see, black and white values, uh, what you could do is take it and render it out. So do a batch bake, square box. Okay, let's uh, get these out of the scene. Take this, make a ball. Assign this ball a new material. Again, with the ambient color all the way up. And then what we'll do is take and break the connection between this and that. And add it to the color surface of it. Okay. I don't need this bump 2D anymore. So this is what was re yielding the results of that texture. Okay, so now what I can do is try to bake this out. So I do that by going back into the bake section here. So I want textures. I do not want to bake shadows this time. I want light and color. 2048 by 2048 TIFF, bake to one map. Okay, there we go. It should be good to go. Let's name it something good. Let's like Alpha Alpha 1 map. Okay, so what we could do is open that in Photoshop now. If 
there's the alpha that we made. It's got this really weird blue thing there. Huh, must be the OpenGL unit within uh, CS4. Okay, so what we're going to do is save this as, and let's save it as a Photoshop file. Save it. Now we can always use that against some object in ZBrush. Oh, let's see. Uh, we'll just kind of play around with it to make sure it works. Sculpt on a square. Plane. Make it a poly mesh. Divide it a few times. And then we'll load that as an alpha, what we just made. Okay, we'll go use the brush stroke and we'll change stroke to drag rectangle and let's see how that works. Oh, pretty sweet. Okay, um, what I could do here is turn off my radial fall, turn up my radial fall off a little bit so it blends together. And there we go. Making very cool bump alphas within Maya for ZBrush. Enjoy.